Rodman one was obviously commissioned in 1987, so it's approximately a 30-year-old machine. Its sole purpose was to do uh, rod recovery, containment inspections, and containment washdowns. Rodman one, um, so piece of kit that's been around for around 30 years now. It does what it needs to, but it's coming to the end of its useful life. There was a, a few workshops at the beginning to try and find out what the issues with Rodman 1 were, the kind of root causes for them. Obviously it's an old piece of kit, so it is going to deteriorate over time. Are we going to have a new total system? Are we going to give Rodman with some enhancements? Or are we just going to stick with what we've got and kind of fix it up a little bit? So that was the option here inside. Rather than try and reinvent the wheel, we decided to go with a new Rodman using the old design, but including some new enhancements. The reason we went down that particular route was A, Rodman 1 had a, a proven track record and also to make the project cost effective. Essentially making Rodman 2 a like for like replacement, which means going through the SL system is much easier, so it's, it's not a new design. And the only element of new design would be the tooling. That kind of made the whole delivery of the project a lot smoother and a lot quicker. There's only you know, maybe five years left on the mop at the time when we, we started looking at this. You know, we've, we've got a limited window that this thing needs to perform in. It made obvious sense to go with James Fishers as though the original team who, who produced Rodman 1. Obviously the James Fisher Nuclear uh, Group as a whole has a broad range of skills across the whole nuclear industry from new build through to plant facilities but also remote handling and therefore it's a very specific skill set of people uh, that are needed to work on those sorts of jobs. It's a bespoke unit which kind of leads you down the road of well these guys have already built it once and, and what along with how quickly we needed it to be delivered to site was the key deciding moment to say well these are the best placed guys to do it to give us some confidence that what we've asked for we will get. An enhanced version of Rodman 1 i.e. Rodman 2 that kept the inherent strengths of Rodman 1 and also to add some additional functionality to allow it to perform more tasks than Rodman 1 was ever designed to perform. The main manufacturing phase took place at Malton um, and Rodman was built in the main there. And then from there, we moved over to our Egremont office to assemble the entire system. We designed a number of additional tools. Again, the thinking behind that was not to change the fundamental manipulator, but actually have additional tools that we can effectively bolt on the end of it as, as standalone items, really. The first tool we looked at was the basket clamp release tool. One of the things that Rodman 1 had been used for and had put additional strain on the manipulator was to undo some sump clamps at the bottom of the uh, working environment uh, where the manipulator operates. The torque required to actually undo those clamps was far in excess of that that the manipulator was actually designed to perform. So we looked at ways of actually increasing the torque output of the manipulator by giving it an additional tool that basically increased the torque output of the manipulator's wrist and increased it to a level that was actually able to undo the, the sump basket clamps. The existing system is controlled by a, a standalone control unit which is on a separate floor to where the actual work is. Rodman 1 is driven from a control console that's situated on the 67 foot level, so it's on the same level as the deployment tower itself. So the only way of driving the manipulator is via the cameras on the manipulator and also with a colleague situated on the 47 foot level looking through the windows to guide them into place. Early on that was realised that this was potentially a weak point in the operation of Rodman because it's always better to physically see what you're doing. So for Rodman 2 uh, we designed a bespoke remote console that was actually designed to be worn by the operator on the 47 foot level and control could be passed between the operator on the top floor and the operator actually looking through the containment unit windows. The operator upstairs can drive Rodman 2 to be close to where it needs to be uh, using the cameras as normal but then it can actually hand control over to an operator who can actually see through the windows what's going on giving them a better better control really and better depth perception and actually means Rodman can be used for more intricate tasks and that obviously complements some of the other tooling we've designed so the acid feed hose coupling tool in particular where close control of the manipulator is so important. So within the charge machine containment there's a braided acid hose um, that runs from the top hat to the actual charge machine containment itself 
and it's connected with a Quick Connect CGen coupling. So what we looked at was designing a specific tool to fit on the end of Rodman 2 that would enable us to actually get in there and undo the, the coupling itself. Rodman, as, as it's been lovingly called, is essentially a modification of the existing jaws, but as opposed to having a set of jaw pincers, it is a set of scoops. And that, combined with a, a nozzle a funnel, um, which we'll put into the plug cock, would reduce the swarf burden, post it down the uh, dissolver tube and, and get rid of it that way. So we trialled that during and after the training, uh, and that seems to have been a success. Rodman 1, in old glory, didn't have an official training package put together. The guys operated Rodman 1 on the basis of, on the back of a, a, an old instruction, basically. Whereas uh, for Rodman 2, it was decided that we'd have an official training package put together. Having a test rig within the rig hall at James Fisher's has enabled us to get up close to the Rodman manipulator and use the actual scale test rig to its fullest extent. In terms of um, the, the training, the, the mock-up um, has been you know, great. A lot of the people who were involved on the training weren't familiar with Rodman, you know, they were new to it, and I think that would have been a massive help to them. The nature of the project meant that we had to work closely together um, simply because of the time scales and the complexity of the project. Teamwork, it's been excellent, it's been cohesive, it's been, we've, we've joined together really well. Um, I think that's something that we've been able to provide as James Fisher Nuclear, and um, that's something that we possess, so that multidisciplinary approach. Really good, really good. Made, made the projects a lot easier to deal with than it uh, potentially could have been. It's been a pleasure working with a really dedicated team on the Rodman 2 project, it's been excellent. I mean, Fisher hadn't intended on delivering it to site until, I think, May time. So we are a number of, a number of months in front. In terms of the general scope for the, for the project, it's, it was fully understood pretty much at the beginning and has basically been done on a fixed price. So it's on budget and before time. <laughs> I think it speaks for itself.